Hi, this is P.R. Sundar. Welcome to the special episode where I am going to talk about a lot of changes uh, the SEBI and NSE is proposing. Well, first, we will talk about the SEBI committee recommendations. SEBI has appointed a committee. Uh, the SEBI is worried there may be a systemic issue uh, because the markets are shooting up like anything. And you know, the option volume has shot up you know, 100 times, 200 times, 400 times from 2018 to 2024. Uh, incidentally, from 2018 only, I have become famous in India. So from there, you know, I continuously teach the retail people how to trade in option. Uh, I'm also one of the responsible person for this kind of volume in options. Okay, now, uh, what are the main proposals? Number one, the contract size, you know, should be increased from 5 lakh to 25 lakh, uh, 20 lakh to 30 lakh. But that means they might settle down somewhere around 25 lakh rupees. Now, this will not remove the people from the market. Why I tell you? Because there are two types of people in market. One is option buyer, one is option seller. Usually, option sellers are the people with higher capital. Whenever people come to attend my workshop and I tell them, you should have minimum capital of 25 lakh rupees if you want to attend my workshop. Of course, one do not need that much capital also, but we tell them because, you know, in order to justify our workshop fee of 50,000 rupees. If your capital is 25 lakh rupees, even if you make 2% return, you know, your uh, workshop fee is recovered. Now, if you are selling an option, and maybe buying an option, maybe 300, 400 point away, you know, right now your margin will be uh, hardly about 15,000 rupees. So when the contract size goes up by five times, you know, the way your margin money may be 75,000 rupees. I don't think that uh, yeah, is a, any option seller are there with a capital of less than 75,000. That's from the option seller perspective. From the buyer perspective, what will happen? Buyers, not all the buyers, but most of the buyers are speculators. You know, what people do, if you really think that the market will shoot up, okay, you are supposed to be buying at the money option or slightly in the money option, so that market goes, you will get some benefit. But if buy far out of the money option, even if the market goes higher, let us say you are buying a 25,000 call option, let us say market goes higher but not above 25,000, you will still lose your money. But still why most of the option buyers are buying far out of the money options? Because they don't have the enough capital. Maybe at the money option, maybe trading around uh, 300 rupees, you know, for one lot that may be 7,500 rupees. But these people may not have 7,500 rupees, these people may have only 3,000 or 4,000. Now what they will do, you know, where it is trading around 100 rupees, you know, 25 lot size into 100, 2,500. So they will go far away. Now, assume that the contract size is increased by five times, right? Now let us say uh, option premium trading around 100 rupees, 25 is the lot size, so 25 into 100, 2,500, okay? But now, assuming that one guy has the same 2,500, but now the contract size is increased, right? He will not get out of the market. He will still want to bet that 2,500. Now, because the contract size is 125, so he has to look where the option premium is 20 rupees, he will go and buy. So, which means that these option buyers, speculators, no matter what you will do, they will not go out of the market, but instead of buying nearer strike, they will buy far away strike. And the far away strike you buy, the probability of your making money is very, very less. So ultimately, more option buyers will lose more money with this one. So it's neither going to affect big option sellers or nor going to affect the option buyers. This may affect very, very small capital option sellers. 
but i don't think that option sellers you know will have a very very small capital so this is a first proposal second proposal there is only one weekly expiry per exchange per week that is an excellent idea you know last time we used to have only monthly expiry we did not have any weekly expiry that time you know this kind of injection stories never has happened now every day expiry you know every day suddenly even today this video is being shot on friday even today also uh, one option uh, sensex option 81000 call option from 8 rupees it went up to 350 rupees you just imagine you know there was a sudden shoot up you know all these injection stories can be stopped so therefore one weekly expiry per exchange is really a very good idea the third one closer to the expiry higher margin now that is not fair actually now if you trade in the long term options what in us they call it as leaps that will have a less risk compared to short term options but the seb has uh, introduced 50% additional margin or 5% additional exposure margin that will work out to be 50% extra margin for long term options which are expiring more than 9 months and then people lost interest in long term option they do the short term now first short term closer to expiry uh, changing because you know let us say uh, i sell an option maybe with the one month view now let us say it has become one week now three weeks gone now only one more week now sebi says you know if this is very short term so you have to pay extra margin money that will affect my cash flow but instead what i am suggesting okay there is extra margin money for intraday players there are so many people i tell you they come and lose money or gain money also whatever it is they do only intraday trade so the sebi committee there are three major recommendations and uh, lot size increase i do not agree with that and uh, we one week one expiry i completely agree with that and the third one is a higher margin closer to the expiry uh, i do partially agree uh, when they say closer to expiry it should be an intraday for intraday they should charge more margin money because intraday you know they players come and you know do all kinds of things so these are the three major things now the fourth one has not come from nsc it uh, it has not come from sebi it has come from nsc nsc sent a circular all of a sudden there are about 2500 stocks in nsc of which around 800 stocks are not eligible for collateral out of the remaining 1700 stocks which are eligible for collateral now they have removed about another 1000 shares from the collateral now only about 700 shares are eligible for collateral and most of the option sellers okay they buy the shares they give it as a collateral and they trade and now those who have invested in those 1000 plus stocks they cannot give that as a collateral now it will be very difficult for them to a trade number 1 you know what is the rationale behind it i can tell you one rationale if somebody is buying a share a share bought at 100 rupees now it has already gone 400 500 rupees now he may pledge the shares and he may take the bet for 400 500 rupees that will be a like very huge leverage for one or the other reason for a black swan event market crashes he will lose the money in fndo trade also and his collateral value will also come down so that is a very very big risk in uh, taking shares as a collateral but unfortunately nsc has removed a lot of debt instrument bharat bond is one of the best debt instrument where you are lending the money you are giving the money only to the government companies it's almost 100% safe that has been removed from the collateral list so my suggestion to nsc is that you know they can remove any number of shares from the collateral list right but the debt instrument there is no logic in uh, removing the debt instrument as collateral 
at the end of the day the exchange job as well as the regulator's job is to move the people from high speculation to low speculation from high risk to low risk the people who put the money in shares and give it as a collateral and trade you know they are the high risk takers the people who are putting the money in debt instruments and giving that as a collateral and trade you know even if market crashes the debt instrument is not going to crash that will be intact so therefore my suggestion is that the debt instrument uh, should not be excluded from the collateral list i don't know whether nsc is going to listen to me or sebi is going to listen to me but anyway we will just tell so we have to express our views now in addition to this and i can tell you a uh, few suggestions uh, even many of you may not agree but let me tell you now once when i was a school teacher you know one young girl she must be 13 14 year old she was brought to me uh, she was caught smoking so she was brought to me i am the one who decide the punishment you know uh, we call it as a discipline master in singapore now before deciding the punishment i just wanted to talk to her i just wanted to reason out with her i was just trying to explain to her you know uh, you know you smoke uh, cigarettes you know you will get cancer then she said no sir we don't want to live for 100 year like you we want to enjoy our life and we die at the early age also it's okay sir if cancer come also okay sir we want to enjoy our life so like this huh? for everything i am putting she was giving a, a kind of reply you know but then at last she said sir you ask me so many question i can i ask you one question i said yes and then she said sir why are you advising me so much you go and advise your government because i was uh, working as a teacher with the ministry of education which which is a civil service so therefore i am a part of a government so she said you know sir why don't you go and tell your government to stop selling cigarette they are selling the cigarette because they want to make money and then we smoke and then you know you give me all these things i really did not know uh, how how to answer that girl then later i went to the ministry for a meeting so in one of the top official you know uh, when she was talking i raised this question to her this is a question one student asked me i did not know how to reply then she said uh, sundar you cannot save every citizen from the ill effects of so many things but that is why we give good education so the government responsibility is to give a good education and once you get all the required education you know what is right and what is wrong and despite that you choose wrong thing that is your choice maybe some people need to smoke in order to get uh, relief from the stress why the stress because they are working so much they are making so much money because of that they get stress but the reason why this girl was punished you know we assume that by the age of 18 the people will have acquired enough knowledge and to decide what is right and what is wrong until the age of 18 they are not acquired enough knowledge so therefore they do not know what is right and what is wrong so therefore we tell them they cannot smoke it was a convincing reply so at the end of the day what is more important is the education so what sebi can do whoever is coming to the options market they should be knowing the enough education they should have enough education they should know what is right and what is wrong you know so maybe they may consider conducting an examination just like you know they have nism certificate for dealers you know like that you know for traders also they should have enough education and many people have come to the market without knowing what it is just i tell you one week before you know uh, one guy who sold a put option uh, no not sold he bought a put option in india cement okay the price keeps going down so he wanted to square off no liquidity 
he came to my social media and asked me why why i am why if i want to sell but no buyer but actually india cement is under the trading ban so because india cement is under trading ban no fresh buying no fresh selling is allowed only those who have bought they can sell it those who have sold they can buy it okay this guy has bought it which means that somebody has sold it the price shot up like anything the seller is already sitting with a huge profit why does he want to square off so no seller want to square off so there is no liquidity then i told him i okay so this is the reason then he was worried sir uh, what will happen i don't mind losing all the premium paid but if there is any physical delivery i will be getting into trouble i don't want to get into that trouble then i said where is the physical delivery physical delivery only if the price goes in the money so people do not know what is the trading ban people do not know what is itm what is otm people do not know when the physical delivery will happen you know so what is the effect you know like people don't know many things and they just come and say somebody say you buy this option they come and buy somebody say you sell this option they come and sell so one you know uh, sebi or nse can come out with a educational quality when i say educational qualification and not that you know you must be a ca to come and trade right and i strongly believe uh, people with mathematics background can be better traders than chartered accountant but they can come out with some kind of educational qualification for the trading as long as they know all the aspects of trading and after knowing everything okay if they still want to trade it is their choice just like after all the education until the age of 18 if somebody want to smoke that is his choice so one the sebi can consider some kind of education now the second one very interesting one in singapore the government wanted to set up a casino uh not the government wanted to set up government wanted to give permission for some people to set up a casino the public went against it public people said we are conservative society how can you open a casino oh, that is for gambling but the government said okay we are conservative society we agree but at the same time if i if, if casino is a very good business it can generate lot of revenue for government but we are losing that business opportunity and then what the government decided we will allow people to set up a casino there are two conditions foreigners can come and gamble so we have no question okay foreigners can come to the casino no question but local people singaporeans should not come to the casino but then the question comes you know why i am denied then they said if singapore citizens want to come to the casino they have to pay a levy each time you enter i think you have to pay about 150 or 200 dollars so you pay that money okay that's a kind of a punishment but foreigners is free or local people have to pay that's number 1 number 2 condition if you are a man we should not receive any complaint from your wife if you are a woman we should not receive any complaint from your husband if your spouse writes a letter to the government saying that my spouse always go to the casino gambling because of that uh, our family life is being affected if any such letter we receive we will block you let us say your wife send a letter to the government then your access will be denied so you can never enter casino so these are the two conditions so the same way and here what i can say i know many people i had one friend and he tend to trade intraday every day he loses but despite that he keep on doing that at 9 o'clock when the market opens you know his wife and daughter will come and snatch away the laptop from him i know there are hell lot of problem so what you can do you know if any person is consistently losing for three financial year let us say then he must be banned from stock market or if any spouse is writing a letter to sebi 
my husband is keep on gambling and we're not taking care of your family then they should not be allowed to trade so this kind of restriction is also a good idea so all these ideas i got it from singapore i'm just giving so uh, it's our responsibility to give our view whether the people listen or not listen that's not our problem so here is my view uh, let us see what is going to happen in future so hope you enjoyed watching this video thank you for watching